So until our last video, we tried creating the C datas and also we tried creating the DB context and the product. And now we are going to create a database and then we'll call this C data method. That's it. In order to do that, I need to go back all the way to my startup class file, which is going to be this one. And over here, I'm going to be calling our database creation itself. If you remember in our last video, we tried adding the SQL light for our data source. So I'm going to be using the exact same thing over here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to add the services and I'm going to add the add DB context of the product DB context. I don't know, for some reason, it's not bringing the product DB context, which is this one. And once I have this product DB context, and then going to create an option of the option dot, you can see that's bringing me up those extension details as well. And I'm going to be using the SQL light to control dot of this one, which is going to be the SQL light. And I can use the configuration dot get connection strings of default connection, something like that. So once I have this, which means I need to create the connection string somewhere in my uh, application settings or over here. So let me try doing that. So I'm just going to do the connection string of the default connection string. And it just brings me up all those details over here, which is all good. So that's the default connection string and the default connection string. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use something like this. So this is the default connection string, which I'm going to be uh, using over here. That's it. This is very, very simple connection string. And once I have this connection string, I can then start calling the database. But I also need to call our C data that I was just talking about. So we need to make sure that we need to we call that seed data. So I'm going to call the product DB context of the product DB context. And before even calling the seed data, we also need to ensure that our database is actually created. If not, it is not going to work. So you can see that we have actually connected to the database, but our database might not be created while the application starts. So we need to ensure that that's happening. So which I can do using the product DB context dot database dot ensure created. And once I have that, I can then go all the way over here and I'm going to call the product DB context dot seed method. This one, right? That's it. So this way it is going to be working for us. I think I also need to add a we format the document and it's all looking good. So that's about the database connectivity part so far we have created. And once I have this database connectivity part, I am then going to create a controller here. So let me call this as the product controller. And this particular product controller is going to inherit from the controller base. So that's going to be the base class which is coming from the microsoft.aspnetcore.mvc and I also need to add the API controller because this is a controller and I also need to add the route where I'm going to say this as probably not the API controller just controllers so I'm going to say and then I'm going to create a constructor which is going to be calling our product db context this one Sorry. product db context uh, and i also need to add an initialized a field which is this one i guess this can be an underscore which is cool and once i have this I can then try creating a simple get method and I can see if that get method actually going to list all the products that I have created. So I'm going to create the HTTP get and I'm going to create a route as well. And probably the route is going to be the controllers uh, slash the action, something like this. And this is the best practices that we need to follow while creating the routes something like this 
and I'm going to create a simple method here. So let me do this public of i action result or just the action result of so it's going to be probably an i enumerable of the products which is correct i guess and then of the context dot products dot to list something like this let me add the system dot link this can be a list type which is all right that's it so you can see that i'm going to be getting all the products and i'm going to making this as to list so that it's going to return me all the products which is going to be pretty good that's it so this is actually going to be happening from the database if i'm not wrong so now let's try to do this let me try doing this on windows 11 it is quite interesting to see things are going to be side by side and let me try doing a dot net uh, run or dot net watch run i'm actually getting an error here let's see what is this particular error it says that the product api dot controller dot product controller dot get of the product api has got a problem because the controllers that i have defined so what is this controllers dot action a replacement value for the token controller could not be found so you can see that i think the one that i have given on that particular controller is not quite right so i guess i have given something like controllers which is wrong so let me go back ah there we go you see that i have given controller here but not controllers so let me just save this over here probably now you can see that it is working fine and because i have given the dotnet watch of run the code is automatically fixed for me and it is also running over here on the uh, browser so you can see that i have got my product api up and running which is cool so now if i do a tryout you will see that all our uh, seed data is coming up over here so all the four product is coming and this four product is nothing but the product that we have actually created in our seed data so if you go back to our code over here uh, on the seed data these are the data's right like keyboard mouse so this is the keyboard over here and this is the mouse over here and the monitor and the cabinet which is going to be these data right so everything is working fine as expected so which means we could now see that it's all working fine as expected so this is how we could actually able to create a simple api to perform a get operation in our next video we'll try to use the repository pattern of trying to access or put the logics on a separate class file like a repository pattern and then we'll try to access the details within the controller instead of straight away accessing the code that you can see over here right like we are trying to access everything on the controller itself directly from the orm uh, which is not the right way of doing it repository pattern is the way to go which we'll be talking in our next lecture